Hello. Today we're going to be replacing the uh, motor and possibly drive belts in a high-end Iowa cassette deck. Fortunately we have a, a wound flutter cassette which is going to help us a lot with uh, setting the correct speed and confirm that the uh, machine works properly at the end. Uh, and we're going to be using the WF GUI software, link below, it's highly uh, useful for this sort of thing. Now to some extent of course uh, any wow and flutter measurement is going to be at the mercy of how good your tape is and I suspect this is not as good as it could be. I've done some um, sort of experiments and I reckon about half of the wow and flutter readings I'm getting are because of what's on the cassette itself. But uh, it'll be good enough for us to, uh, to get going. So what we have here is the Iowa XK007 Exilia. Now, I had a problem with this machine a little while ago. It was making intermittently a slight um, burbling noise from the motor. And once or twice it even squeal and you could hear wow and flutter on it. So I took it apart and lubricated the brass end bearing of the motor and it's been fine ever since. But I'm not happy with that. I want to change the motor. And the problem is getting hold of high quality motors today. Uh, I was able to obtain one and I'll give you some information on this. So there's a, an organization called Tapeheads. Um, I'll give you a link below. And via them, I was able to find this motor from a supplier called Pacific Stereo in USA. And this is a high quality uh, DC servo motor which should be a perfect replacement for the one in this machine. Now, there's an adjustment there for the speed. That may or may not need to be adjusted, we'll see. Uh, we do have a wound flutter tape, so we can check the speed on that. Let's uh, take the machine apart and see what we're up against. Okay, let's uh, have a look inside. I've already marked up what the wiring was on the motor because I took it off. So there we are. Now, this motor part number is XMI6B2HL. There are other motors which uh, do essentially the same job. The great thing about this particular deck is, unlike some other Iowa machines that use the same or essentially the same deck such as the uh, AD F770 I have one of those on this particular one there's plenty of space behind the deck and it's not too hard to get to this without having to remove the entire front and taking the deck out the F770 is a much harder machine to work on so let's um, take this uh, motor this bracket off that supports the motor. The other thing is, is it worth changing the belts at the same time? Well, I have some belts. I'm not sure if these are the correct belts for this machine, but I will check that. Uh, let's uh, investigate that later. Right, here comes the motor with one of the drive belts. And the other drive belt then goes between the capstans. And though these appear to be in absolutely perfect condition, there's a argument for possibly changing them. So the first one, which goes to, from the motor to the first capstan, is longer, and the smaller one goes between the two capstans. Let's have a look. So that's the original. It's kind of slightly light grey. And here's what I believe may be a replacement. Very, very slightly tighter. I'd say that's a good thing. Though it's possibly just maybe a tiny bit narrower. Nothing really in it though.
I believe that is a good substitute for that one. That's sat on there nicely. And now for the longer belt. Again, that looks perfect. It has just a tiny, tiny bit more. It's a tiny bit tighter. It's just what we're looking for. And this one, actually, the new one is very slightly wider than the original. But of course, it's unlikely these belts are the originals from the deck. I like that. That seems to be good to me. So when we reassemble it, we'll fit that belt. Next thing we need to do, well, I'll desolder the wiring. Aha, uh -huh, look, it's been marked up. Somebody's marked it up with uh, a pen, black and red. So that's clearly, can you see that? Let's set you up there. I hope you can see that. So red at the top, then black. Mechanically fit the motor first, I think. Need to look at where the pulley is on the shaft. Okay. What I'm going to do is measure the distance from the top of this pulley down to the motor body using a micrometer. So, just approximately. It's around about 14 millimeters from the top of there to the body. So, when I put this onto here, I need to make sure it's the same distance. Hopefully, I can just pull it off. There we go. Right. Hopefully it's the same size shaft. Certainly feels like it. And now we'll check for 14 millimeters. A little bit too much still, a bit of further on. Try again. Definitely feels like it's in the order of things. Yes, I like that. That's about the same position. Now we can mechanically mount the motor onto the bracket. Now it gets a little fiddly. Got to put the drive belt on both the capstan pulley and the motor pulley. Capstan flywheel, I should say. There we go. Capstan flywheel and motor pulley. Okay. I had a problem then. This feels nice. They rotate together. But when I added the motor, which spins nicely, and this drive belt, it just felt not right. didn't want to spin. Let's reassemble that and try again. Yes, that feels much better. There's a pair of wires here which could catch on the K 
capstan so it's important I think that this is all reassembled in such a way as that it can't touch the spinning components within the deck you have to be so careful to make sure that nothing can touch the capstan flywheels right nothing's touching the capstan flywheels Now then, white is positive, and that's the connector at this end of the motor. So I'll solder that. Really, for such a high-end deck as this, you would hope that the uh, motor supply wires would be a little bit thicker than they are. Okay, the motor is installed. We can uh, give it a whirl and make sure that the basic functions work. Good. Before we do any further testing on this, I think I'll just uh, leave it playing for a while. Let the new belts and motor settle in a bit before we do uh, wow flutter and speed checks. Well, I think I have pretty good results now. The machine's been left running for several hours on the new motor and belts. Uh, let's see what the wow flutter readings are. So I hope you can see from that, the um, frequency, which should be 3150, is definitely in that order of things. I found it very slightly um, as you play the tape through. It's not always consistent. The start of the tape tends to be a little bit faster. Um, and the wow flutter readings, well, what can we say? Peaking it around about 0 0.2, um, or the RMS value is around about 0 0.1. So... Um, Pretty good results. Uh, certainly, when I listen to it, I can't really hear any wow flutter, even on the uh, test tape, so that's working quite well. So, um, I'll reassemble this machine and um, put it back in my system and do some final tests on it. Before we leave this machine, I wanted to show you the huge power transformer which sticks out the back. It's an impressively bulky and heavy cassette deck. Though the wow and flutter readings are hardly any better than they were with the old motor, I have confidence now that they should uh, have no further issues with this machine. I will see if I can source a better test tape to do some further readings in the future. And there's a possibility that higher quality audiophile grade uh, belts would give a, a tiny improvement. Well, I hope you've enjoyed working on this uh, impressive cassette deck. Please do like, share and especially subscribe so I'll do more content on audio and video technology in the future. I have a number of good things lined up. Bye for now.